Hi everyone, I have a bit of a watercolour art haul for you today. I'm going to be swatching all of these new colours and I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to be honest and confess that a couple of them I have used already because they arrived when I was in Suffolk and I was kind of keen to try them. But a lot of these I haven't actually tried yet and I also have some watercolours from Aliona of Aliona's Watercolour Creations here on YouTube. I have a couple of gifts here actually from YouTube friends. I have this pad of paper which was part of my Christmas present from Crixis. I'm going to put the names on the screen and also link to them in the description beneath the video so you can go and check out their channels. But um, yeah, Crixis sent me a lovely little package at Christmas and in it was also this um, professional quality watercolour paper. It looks really lovely, acid-free paper. Um, you get 10 sheets, cold press, um, what GSM is it? 400 GSM. So I might open that up and hopefully you can see that it is lovely and thick. I really love thick watercolour paper. It has a very, very slight texture to it but not much so I'm keen to try it and see how the watercolours look on it but I really like the design of the cover I think that's really sweet with the little rabbits and Aliona sent me a palette um, it's her new ultimate palette so these are five tube watercolours that she has made herself so this is quite exciting to be able to try those so that was really kind of her to send those to me at Christmas so I feel very lucky and um, yeah, and I have lots of other watercolours here as well. So let's get into it. I'm just going to show you the watercolours first, um, talk you through them quickly, and then we're going to get onto the swatching because that's the exciting bit really, isn't it? So in here, I have three more core paints because I am loving the ones I bought from them before. I actually have their earth set of six colors which i haven't shown on youtube but i did share with my patrons i kept that one aside for them to kind of exclusively have the swatching and color mixing of so that's on my patreon but um you may remember that i bought bohemian green earth and the core paints gray as well the other month and loved them i love the formulation i love the intensity of the color so I decided to get Titan Buff, Ardois Grey. I don't know whether I'm saying that one correctly, but it looks like a really interesting, almost granulating grey. So I'm quite excited to try that. And Hooker's Green. I thought that would be a good green for me to have. So those are the three new core paints. I have a couple here from Holbein. I really like the Holbein watercolours, by the way. I've got Shadow Green and Yellow Grey. I have three Sennelier colours as well. So I have Caput Mortem. I love a Caput Mortem. Payne's Grey. I love a Payne's Grey. And I have Light Grey. That's one of the ones I've been using. You can see that, can't you? Because it's kind of a little bit smaller than the others, a little bit dented in. Um, I'm loving that colour, by the way. And I thought I would try... This one from White Knights, this is Marengo. I think I've only ever tried one other White Knights colour. Um, but this looks like my kind of thing. It looks like a very, I don't know, moody, stormy blue-grey, I guess we would call it. Sorry about the banging in the background. It's the wood burner. Um, makes all sorts of noises when it's on. Um, I also have, you can see I've used this one as well, Joseph Zed's Cool Grey. This is a Daniel Smith colour and I am loving this as well. I seem to be collecting up all of the different greys I possibly can at the moment. Um, Old Holland, now this is a new brand for me. I don't think I've ever tried any Old Holland paints before, but Jackson's had them on a special offer and Blue Deep was the one I went with. So we'll have a look at that. I also have two Michael Harding colours. So Michael Harding, I mean, these ones are recently, um, they've recently been released and I just thought I would try a couple of them just to see what they're like. So I got Payne's Grey, you know me, I love Payne's Grey. I can never have enough Payne's Greys. In fact, 
I'm going to be doing a Payne's Grey comparison video. I'm collecting up as many Payne's Grey watercolours as I possibly can from across lots of different brands and I'm going to do a comparison video. I can't promise you I'll get them from each and every single brand but um, I'll have a lot to compare. I have some more on order at the moment so I'm quite excited about that. And I have Cosmic Blue because it looked like an amazing colour on the online swatch and I really like the name. The last one in the box is A Gallows Antique Gold. Now I got this one because I wanted a light fast gold pigment. I'm not 100% sure whether the gold I currently have is completely light fast and I know that this one is. So um, I love A Gallo paints anyway. I used to have to buy them in their shop updates that they did once a month and they'd have to come all the way from Italy. So I'm really pleased that Jackson's have started stocking A Gallo paints. Um, I think I have all the A Gallo paints I need for the time being, to be honest. Um, now I have this gold one, I kind of feel like my collection is complete for the time being. <laughs> never say never because we may remember that last year I mentioned something about not wanting to buy any more watercolours and then I quickly decided that there were too many lovely watercolours in the world and if they make me happy I should just have them if I can afford them. So I've decided now that I am a watercolour collector. I am completely obsessed with watercolour. It has become, well, it has become an obsession, <laughs> a good obsession. It has inspired me and excited me and I feel like my work is developing because of it. And I'm really, really, well, I'm going to say excited again. I'm really excited. Um, I need another word other than excited. Um, inspired? <laughs> Did I say that? I don't know. So finally, from the watercolours I bought, we have three Daniel Smith large tubes. We have raw umber violet, which I have had my eye on for probably a couple of years now. Um, and I finally decided to get it. I'm kind of expecting it to be a bit like a Kaput Mortem, but we will see. I have black tourmaline genuine. Now this is a really granulating, interesting black. I've also been keen to try this one before. So that's pretty exciting. And one that I didn't think that I was going to get, but have recently fallen in love with the colour, Minnesota Pipestone Genuine. It's just, it looked really interesting. I have swatched it before. I had a dot card from Daniel Smith and I didn't think that I would be getting this one, but my tastes in watercolour are evolving and I'm finding that I'm loving colours that previously I wouldn't have been that bothered about. So we're going to be swatching all of these and we're also going to be swatching Aliona's lovely handmade watercolours. So she started doing them in tubes and they're quite generous tubes actually. Are they 14 mil? I think they're 14 mil. Does it say? Oh, it says on the front. <laughs> yeah, they're 14 mil. Um, so we have chartreuse, quinacridone, gold deep, strawberry velvet, cobalt teal and green gold deep. So it'd be lovely to try those. I've tried Aliona's watercolour pans before, but I haven't tried any in the tubes. Um, so I'm quite impressed she's doing her own tube. She's like a proper little factory. Um, <laughs> I don't know how she's doing all of this because it must take a long time to make your own watercolours, but I'm very, very excited to try them. So let's get to the swatching. I'm going to start with Core Titan Buff. And I think what I'm gonna do is swatch in circles. Um, I just feel like doing something a little bit different. And I used to do circles ages ago when I was swatching some paints from Choosing Keeping. I think I did it in a couple of videos and I kind of feel like I'd like to do it again. So that's what we're going to do today. We'll see how neatly I can do these. So I'm going to do one with the paint very much undiluted. I'm just adding a tiny bit of water to get it to flow. And then the other circle will do a wash of the paint. Buff Titanium, or in this case Titan Buff, is a great neutral colour to have in your palette. It's also a fantastic mixing colour 
because it makes really nice muted mixes. So it's a colour I like to have in my palettes if possible. Um, since I discovered it makes such nice mixes. Oh, I think I've got a bit of dust fluff in there. So I'm swatching on the paper, first of all, the one that uh, Crixis gave me. And it feels really nice actually to work on. As I said earlier, it's a lovely thick paper and it's a little bit textured, but not too much. It's really interesting to swatch in both Mastone and Wash because you get to see the variation. Um, I mean, they look almost like two different colours, don't they? This is what I love about watercolours, actually. I kind of feel that basically from one colour, you can get so many different tones. OK, so this is Ardois Grey. Let's have a look at this one. Quite excited to see what this looks like. Not as opaque as Buff Titanium or Titan Buff, as <laughs> Core calls it. This is a really nice warm grey. And I kind of have a feeling that when we do it in a wash, it's going to be slightly granulating. I don't know how granulating on this paper. Because if you want your paints to really granulate, the more textured the paper, the more granulation. Um, so as I said, this paper is not really super textured. Okay, let's do more of a wash of this. Trying to keep all of these circles roughly the same size. Which is easier said than done. The wood burner's making an incredible amount of noise in the background. I don't know why it's banging so much today. <laughs> it's so nice when it's spring and it's warmer in here. This is a lovely grey. Okay, we're going to leave that there. And I'll label the next two. So first up this time we have Holbein Yellow Grey. Now this is a three pigment watercolour. I'm actually writing all of the pigments underneath. Um, and if you can't see them while I'm swatching, I will hold it up at the end so you can have a good close look at the pigment information if you're interested in that. I love this muted dusky yellow. Really nice colour. Wow, and very opaque. A bit like the Titan Buff, and I think that's because they both have PW6 in them. They both have a white pigment, and that does tend to make colours more opaque. Okay, let's see what this looks like in more of a wash. Yeah, sort of like an earthy yellow, really. Oh, I love this one. I'm loving them all, really. <laughs> I very rarely buy watercolours that I'm not keen on because I do a lot of research beforehand. I generally tend to have a good idea of what they are going to look like. Sometimes I'm surprised, but um, I'll try to do quite a bit of research before I buy. And I kind of really enjoy the research part of um, art supply shopping. I think that's really enjoyable when you're trying to find out about things and you're looking up swatches and I look to see if people have made videos on them sometimes as well. That 
that's a really lovely colour. Okay, I'm quite excited to try the next one. This is Minnesota Pipestone Genuine. Daniel Smith colour. Now, the reason I'm also treating myself to so many new watercolours is because I've recently started a swatching club tier on my Patreon and every month I'm going to be sending the members of the swatching club. It has limited places and at the moment it's sold out. So if you're interested in joining, the only thing I can recommend is perhaps to wait until somebody leaves that tier and then new spaces will open up. But what I'm going to be doing is sending out a dot card featuring six different watercolours every month. So in the mail, members of the Swatching Club will receive a dot card um, with watercolour samples from my own watercolour collection. And uh, I think that's quite exciting. I know that I would love this <laughs> if someone else was doing it. So I'm hoping that, um, that they will really love it. I mean, they get all of the other rewards on my Patreon. So the extra videos, the podcasts. Um, what else do I offer? Shop discount, just general posts and art prompts. They get to see new work before other people, that kind of thing. All sorts of things I do on my Patreon. So they get all of those rewards, but they also get the physical reward. So in the mail each month, they'll receive a dot card with a curated selection of watercolours that they can try that month. And I'm really excited to be doing this. Did I mention that? I probably did. <laughs> but um, I've allowed myself to buy some watercolours I've been wanting to try as well and I thought especially in um, larger tubes because I have 30 members in the swatching club and that's the maximum I could deal with in one go <laughs> I think anyway if I find I can manage to process more each month because um, obviously I have to make all of these dot cards and I have to hand label them all so it's going to take me a little while so it's very sort of handmade and curated if i can do more each month i'll open up more slots for that tier but i don't know whether i can um but i have a couple of other tiers on my patreon as well that's just for extra online content digital content but yeah i thought this will be a good opportunity to try colors that i've been wanting to try myself and then i can justify buying the larger tubes because I'm sharing them with my patrons. Minnesota Pipestone was one of these colours that I thought, um, I don't know whether it will be this month or whether it will be another month, but it's going to be one of the colours I share eventually with my patrons. This is really pretty. It's very earthy if you do it in mass tone, um, but it's super pretty and is it granulating a little bit I think it might be but it's super pretty and subtle if you do it in more of a wash I'm really liking that but yeah it's interesting um, I think to watch people swatching colors online and it's obviously useful if you want to do some art supply shopping and you want to be able to have a better idea of how paints look, how colours look before you buy. But there's nothing quite like swatching things yourself and trying things yourself. So this will give them an opportunity to try different watercolours that they wouldn't necessarily be able to try. You never know when you're going to find your new favourite watercolour. So next up is Sennelia Caput Mortem. I do have other Caput Mortems but I'm very curious about theirs because I have a couple of Sennelia paints and 
I absolutely love them. They're among my favorite paints. So it'd be interesting to see what their Caput Mortem looks like. Wow, beautifully rich. That is a gorgeous color. Wow, so much pigment. Yeah, I've been really impressed with the Sennelier paints. If you saw my video, um, I think it's a couple of videos back, published in January, January 2023, if you're watching this in the future. Um, it was one where I mixed 77 colours, tubes of watercolour together, and then made a painting with the resulting colour. So a dot from each tube and... Um, and I ended up with this really lovely green, grey, moody, dark, lovely colour. Um, yeah, and I created a bird painting with it. But you may remember that some of these colours, because I did list all of the colours, um, and a few of these I'm swatching today were actually in that video. Um, they were included in those 77 colours but I hadn't actually swatched them at that point separately. So the Ardois Grey was one of them. I think the Titan Buff was as well. And yeah, the Holbein Yellow Grey was. This one wasn't, because this one's arrived recently. Um, but yeah, I've never actually seen them swatched out like this separately. I used them in that video, but yeah, I hadn't had a chance to actually really swatch them out and look at them. And I would always advise that you swatch your paints before you use them for the first time in a piece of work because I kind of feel like it gives you much more of an idea of what they're capable of and just, I don't know, you get to know your colours and your materials more. So let's do a wash of this one. Gosh, this is a really pretty colour. I'm loving this. Be interesting to see how this compares to my other Caput Morton paints. It is a colour I really love, but that will have to be for another video because we're not going to have time today to do comparisons. <laughs> I've got enough paints here to just be getting on with for this video. It always takes a while to swatch. Especially doing it in circles. Gosh, this is good practice for brush control, I'll tell you. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about um, which colours are going to go on the Patreon Swatching Club dot card this month. And I can't decide yet. I keep coming up with different ideas um, but I have to do it soon because they'll need to dry they're all going to be sent out at the end of the month so I think over the next few days I have to make a decision and and then I'll put the dot cards together so that will be fun I might have to film some of it I think It'd be quite fun to show the process of that I'm trying to imagine 30 dot cards all over my studio. <laughs> I think I might have to put them in another room to dry off. Because they might get in the way in here. Anyway, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Loving that. Okay, we have Raw Rumba Violet, Daniel Smith. I'm kind of feeling like this is going to be a little bit similar. That's why I've put them side by side. But we will see. Ah, oh, this looks darker. Oh, this is pretty. Yeah, this is one I've had my eye on for a while. Yeah, it looks a little bit more brown than the Caput Mortem. That same kind of rich look though. I feel like my circles are getting bigger. I think they are. trying to keep them a 
it's sort of a uniform size, but it's difficult. <laughs> it's really hard to paint freehand circles like this. Kind of easier in a wash than it is in when you're doing the mass tone, actually. By the way, this one has dried with like a ring around it. I think that's because when I applied the paint, I then added more water at the end. And so it kind of gave this effect of, um, I don't know, the way the water and the pigment were drying, it kind of gave a really strange, I could already see it happening. And I've had this happen before. So I would say that this is my swatching rather than, um, rather than how the paint would look if you were to use it in a piece. So just bear that in mind. Let's see how this one looks in more of a wash. Oh, it looks more similar to the Kaput Mortem now. But in mass tone, they're quite different. That's interesting. Of course, you can only really tell when they're fully dry. So what I'll do is I'll leave these to dry and then I'll hold them up closely to the camera so you can have a really good look at them. You'll have to let me know if you've seen anything today that you think you're going to add to your next order. So first we're going to try Joseph Z's Cool Grey, Joseph Z's Cool Grey, if you're American. <laughs> um, I've tried this one, I painted a couple of tree paintings with it and it was gorgeous. It's made from three pigments, PB36, a blue pigment, PV19, a violet pigment and PBK6, which is a black pigment. And you'll see when it's in a wash, it really is a lovely colour. Look at it, it's so inky and dark. When you don't add very much water. I love this kind of colour. I really want my patrons to try this one. Because I've been loving using it. Gosh, this is going to be a big circle. They are getting bigger and bigger, aren't they? <laughs> okay, let's try it in a wash. It's um, a very strong colour and I've actually squeezed out way too much, which is what I usually do. I love this one in a wash. When I used it for the trees, I tried to vary between mastone and wash for the branches and it really gave it a nice depth. Gosh, I wish I hadn't done these so massive, but there we go. <laughs> I just have to say the bottom row is much bigger. Well, it makes sense to have the bigger circles on the bottom, I suppose, isn't it? I don't know why, but it sort of feels like it's more balanced, I guess. I can see that violet pigment in there now. It's quite a versatile colour, this one. I feel like you could do so much just with this one colour. You could get many, many tones. Okay, the last one for this section is the Black Tourmaline Genuine. Wow, that's coming out of the tube. There's so much in there. <laughs> it's already coming out of the tube. I didn't even have to really squeeze that one. I'll try not to let that get mixed in with the um, cool grey there. So it's a black, but apparently it's quite an interesting black when you use it in a wash. 
so we will see how this looks be interesting to find out I'm going to squeeze this one in a little bit I've done such massive circles that I haven't left myself very much room yeah I like this paper so thank you Crixis I think I'm going to enjoy working on this it reminds me a bit of the one I got from Choosing Keeping, the Aquarella, I think it's called. Um, very similar texture. I kind of feel like it's not great if you want your paints to granulate. So if you're into that, probably need a more textured paper. But this would be really good for details and so on. I feel like details would be easier to do on a paper like this. And it is really nice to work on. It stayed very nice and flat. Um, but yeah, that's a lovely black. I can see it's granulating slightly even on this paper. So we'll leave those to dry and then I'll hold them up and you can have a closer look at them. So next we're going to swatch on this Canson paper. This is Moulin de Roy 100% cotton watercolour paper, cold pressed 140 pounds or 300 GSM. So it looks like that. Hopefully you can see that with a slight texture, maybe a bit more textured than the one that Crixis gave to me. Um, it's not quite as thick as the other paper either. The reason I bought this pad, and in fact I bought four pads of this paper, is because I'm going to be using this one to make the dot cards for my swatching club on Patreon. So I'm not really intending to work on it, but I just thought it'd be interesting to do some swatching on it and to see whether I like it or not for actually working on. But I think it'll be a good paper for the dot cards. I wanted it to be cotton paper, and um, I wanted it to be very lightly textured and I think this looks like a good one. So I'm going to give this a go and we'll see what it's like. And yes, the big fairy sweater has come out again because it's cold in here and I keep getting cold just sitting here. So um, yeah, <laughs> you'll have to forgive the massive Yeti arms. I kind of feel like they're a bit distracting when I'm filming, but we have to just go with it. We're going to start with Core Hooker's Green. And this is made from three pigments, PY150, PB60 and PR122. I'm gonna try and speed this up a bit because I feel like I'm taking a long time <laughs> to do these swatches. So I may put a few more cuts when I'm editing on this section. So let's do the mass tone. It's a lovely dark green. The core paints always feel so nice to work with. Really smooth formulation. So that's a super dark, gorgeous green. This is a really nice hooker's green. They do seem to vary quite a bit in my experience. So in more of a wash, it looks quite a bit lighter, but it's still really nice dark green. Be interesting to see how this looks when it dries. Looks like it's slightly granulating. I've got an interesting texture. That's a real beauty. I think it is granulating. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, so next up, another green. This time it's shadow green. This is Holbein. I've tried not to squeeze out too much. <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly squeezing out way too much 
when I'm doing these swatches. So I think this is basically the same pigment as Perylene Green, am I right? PBK31, and I love a Perylene Green. So funny to think I wasn't that bothered about greens for so many years in my work. And now I'm pretty much obsessed with them, especially certain greens. Very pretty in a wash, isn't it? Okay, let's move on to the next ones. I think I'm going to do Michael Harding Cosmic Blue and Old Holland Blue Deep. I'm curious about this cosmic blue. Let's have a little look. I have a feeling it's gonna be, from the swatch online, color separating, maybe granulating too, we will see. Oh wow. Oh, that's lovely. Gosh, I thought this would be a nice colour. It really is. So it's a super dark blue-black in mass tone. And let's see what it looks like in more of a wash. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? One of the Schmincke Horodam super granulation colours. It's got kind of a similar look and feel. Oh wow, <laughs> I'm really pleased I got this one. I love it. I'm kind of excited about this one. Looks really nice with those greens too, doesn't it? Blues and greens. Always so nice together. Be interesting to see how these dry. Um, looks granulating. Very, very nice. I love this colour. I'm really excited by that one. Okay, let's try the Old Holland Blue Deep. So this is my first time trying Old Holland watercolours. So my first time trying Michael Harding and my first time trying Old Holland. Michael Harding are a new brand though, they haven't been around very long. So I'm expecting this to be a really inky dark blue. So interesting fact, they didn't have the pigment numbers on the packaging. They had um, the names of the pigments. So carbon and thraquinone and ultramarine. So this is a three pigment color. Oh, that's nice too. Oh, this feels like a nice paint to work with. So far, I'm impressed with these two new brands to me. That is really, really nice. Okay, let's try it in a wash and see how different it looks. Beautiful. Oh, this would be a great stormy sky colour or overcast sky. Well, you want it to look slightly erring on the blue side, but kind of, but kind of grey and overcast. 
atmospheric, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> oh wow, really love those. Such pretty colours. All four of these are so nice, aren't they? The Michael Harding Cosmic Blue and the Old Holland Blue Deep are granulating so nicely. I'm actually really liking this paper to work on. And um, even though it was 100% cotton, I mean, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't like super expensive either. And Jackson's actually had these on an offer when I got them. That's why I got four pads, because I'm going to need a lot of paper to make my dot cards. But yeah, I'm liking this. Okay, the next ones are Sennelia Light Grey and White Knight's Marengo. So as I said earlier, I have actually tried this one. I worked on something in my sketchbook with the Sennelia Light Grey and I really like the colour. Very, very nice. Cool grey, very blue grey. And quite opaque as well. You can see that the shadow green, the wash, has really, I think, got quite a bit paler than it was when it went on. But the mass tone, I mean, it's still a bit wet, I think. Yeah, it is. So we'll have to wait until it's fully dry. But I was going to say it hasn't faded very much, but we'll wait and see. Or well, desaturated, is that the correct term? I think it probably is. with that. This is a great sky colour. If, like me, you don't like painting really bright skies, if you favour a more muted colour palette, this one is a great one to use as a sky colour. More subtle sky. Or indeed, for water. See, it's such a pretty colour. They all look so lovely. Okay, this is a new one for me. I kind of have a feeling this colour is going to be a little bit like the one we've just swatched. I think it is, they look quite similar. But the proof of the pudding is in the swatching. <laughs> I think that's how it goes, is it? Oh, no, it does look a bit different, actually. It looks less violet and a little bit more, I don't know, sort of, just more of a, I don't want, I'm muted, is that the right word? It looks a little bit warmer. Warmer, I think, perhaps that's a cooler light grey this one looks warm oh this is a nice colour oh, it is different actually wow it's super opaque kind of feels a bit more like working with gouache yeah that's lovely they are quite different actually i'm surprised so you never know until you try right, let's see if we can give this a bit more transparency this one really is quite opaque. I'm absolutely loving all of these colours. There's not one I'm kind of a bit hesitant about or disappointed in. I just love watercolour. I have decided that I'm a watercolour collector. It's becoming pretty obvious that I have a bit of an obsession. It's a good thing it's my job, isn't it? Very, very nice. Totally be a good colour for the North Sea, this one. So the final two on this sheet are the Sennelia Paints Grey and the Michael Harding Paints Grey. And we'll see how different these are. They do actually have different pigments in them. The Sennelia has a PV19, a violet pigment, PB15-1, 
which is a blue pigment and a PBK7, which is a black pigment. And the Michael Harding has PBK9 as its black pigment, PB29 as its blue pigment, and it actually has a yellow pigment, PY42. So yeah, it should be quite different. This will be interesting. It's a lovely inky, rich Payne's Grey. I love Payne's Greys that lean slightly more towards being quite blue. I mean, you want them to have that darkness, but I really love this hint of blue. I have had Payne's Greys that be more like a grey, just a grey, a normal grey. I'm kind of much fonder of the ones that are more like a dark, inky colour. You can always really tell what something is like when you do more of a wash and the characteristics of the paint of the colour become more apparent. Ooh. <laughs> Went a little bit wonky with that one. I guess wonky circles have more character, don't they? This is what I'm going to tell myself. Yeah, why has that one gone so wonky? Oh well, we're just going to have to live with it. Because if I do any more to it, it's going to make it really big. And we don't want that. Okay, let's try this Michael Harding Payne's Grey. After the Cosmic Blue, I'm quite excited to try this one. I'm loving the look of this palette here. It's looking so gorgeous, isn't it? Might have to take a photo of that for the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, now what is this reminding me of? It might be, might be the Daniel Smith Payne's Grey, actually. Is that what it's reminding me of? Oh, it's lovely. Sorry, I keep saying everything is lovely, but that's because everything has been lovely. Yeah, I know why they're getting wonkier. It's harder to paint <laughs> when they're on the bottom row and I don't want to lean on the other ones. That's what's happening here. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Let's see if we can bring it back. Let's bring it back. There we go, that will do. You know, it's really so much harder to do circles, swatching circles, than doing pebble swatches. Okay, I think we're going to have to say that this is done. <laughs> I keep wanting to neaten them, but we're going to leave them. Finally, we have the A Gallo Antique Gold and we have Aliona's palette of five colours. Because this video is very, very long, what I'm going to do is swatch these, but I'll speed up the footage and then I'm going to come back afterwards and I'm going to talk to you about the colours then.
now that these are dry, you can see just how vibrant some of them are, particularly the chartreuse. Um, the cobalt teal is a really beautiful, vibrant colour too. Green gold deep is lovely. I think probably from this set of five of Aliona's colours, the ones I would use the most are the quinacridone gold deep and the green gold deep. I really like the cobalt teal. I don't use it very often in my work, but I do have a cobalt teal in my main watercolour palette. So it is a colour I love. The strawberry velvet is really interesting. Um, it's made from three pigments, one of which is potter's pink. So you get this really interesting granulation. I think this is a really nice colour. I don't usually go for reds all that much, but this is a little bit more earthy and a little bit more subtle and I kind of like that. This one, I think um, being so bright and almost neon is probably one that I wouldn't really use very much in my work, but I know that some of you are going to love it if you love vibrant, bright, vivid colours. You know me, I'm certainly a more earthy or muted colour palette um, kind of person. <laughs> but they are all really beautiful. They make a really nice set. And one thing I must say is that the formulation is really nice. They're lovely to work with. So Aliona's has done an amazing job with those. And finally, I swatched the little half pan of the A Gallo Antique Gold. And um, if I hold this up, hopefully this will focus Hopefully that's focusing for you and you can see these colours a little bit better. But I love the subtlety of that antique gold. It's not too blingy or in your face. It's just a really nice, very subtle looking gold. Lovely, really like it. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> if you've made it to the end of this incredibly long video, I don't know, what could you say? Um, I know, leave a comment telling me whether you favour bright or muted colours. If you've made it to the end and you love bright colours, just say bright exclamation mark. If you love muted colours, say muted exclamation mark. And I'll know that you made it to the end of the video. And I'll also know your general colour preferences. Okay, thanks everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you do, click the little bell icon because it will let you know when I upload new videos. Okay, I think that's all. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you soon in the next video.